Hello, it's Brooke. Um, so this is gonna be one of those videos that I promised, oh, two, three weeks ago that I never got around to actually publishing. Sorry about that. Um, this is actually gonna be the video where I'm gonna talk about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I'm gonna try and splice in some pictures somehow. Maybe. I kind of suck at this video editing thing, you might have noticed. So if that sucks, I'm sorry. There's, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Love me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about that a bit. Uh, first thing I'm gonna talk about, um, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it. Um, there's, one thing that sucks about it is that it's in two different parks, which I didn't realize at first. My mom did. She got the tickets for both parks, but I was just like, la la la, Wizarding World. Um, yeah, it's Hogsmeade is in Universal Studios, and then Diagon Alley, which is the better one, in my opinion, and I'll talk about that more in a bit, is in um, Island of Adventure, I think. And so... That was a bit annoying, but so you gotta get both, because here's the thing. Um, one of the coolest things about it is the Hogs, the Hogsmeade, the Hogwarts Express, which you can actually ride on, and I was kind of thinking it would just be like a shuttle that looked like a train between the two, uh, two parks, and it works like that, except it's actually almost like a ride in and of itself. Because, um, you get in line, you get on the train, you get in a compartment, and then the windows are replaced with a screen, like a TV screen kind of thing, which allows them to project, first of all, you get to actually see, like, the trip to Hogwarts, but second of all, you're seeing all sorts of stuff going on outside, like, um... I don't know, all sorts of Wizarding World stuff's going on out there. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. And then on your other side, you know, the side facing inwards towards the train, that side, the windows are frosted over. And there's some cool stuff going on over there, too. I'm not going to tell you too much, though, because spoilers. And that was one of my favorite parts, so I don't want to... I don't want to say anything, because then you'll be... All like, eh, that ass hat told us, and now we don't get to enjoy it as much. Um, I don't think any of you would actually say that, but to be safe. Oh, I got new glasses. This is totally off topic, but I feel cute, so that's nice. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is Ollivanders. Uh, that's another thing I think you should definitely do. Uh, my one, the one that I got, is this. Uh, it is one of the interactive ones. It one of the non-character specific ones. I forget what they're called. But there's a set of ones that aren't specific to characters. Like, you could get Snape's wand, or you could get Dumbledore's wand, or you could get Hermione Granger, Luna Lovegood, Narcissa Malfoy, who has the prettiest wand. Oh my gosh. She has such a pretty wand. I almost got that one. Um, and the list goes on, but... Um, there's also a set, like this one, that is non-character specific. That's what I ended up going with, because I felt like if I chose a specific character's wand, it would feel too much like playing favorites, and also I couldn't decide between Snape and Narcissa. So, I got this one instead. On uh, the handle detail is pretty cool. It's a cobra with a skeleton. Um, so yeah, those ones you're supposed to choose based on, like, your birthday month. There's like a Celtic wood calendar thing. It's like, oh, this one's this one, this one's this one. This is alder wood. It's not actually made of wood. Spoiler. But, um, supposedly alder wood. And it's the December wand. I don't know if any of you guys are aware of this. Maybe if you guys are, like, hardcore stalking me, you are, but I don't know. Um, I'm born in January, but this was the prettier wand, so I went with it, and then I had to deal with explaining to everyone I met for the rest of the vacation, oh no, no, my, my birthday's next month, I just liked this wand, 
and they all kind of gave me this look like, are you, are you kidding me? That's like, people were strangely judgmental about it. But, so that was really cool. Um, the thing with the Ollivanders, like, wand chooses you thing, of the whole group of people that go into the room, only one person has a wand to choose them. Which is kind of lame, but, you know, it's still kind of fun to do, so, you know, depending on how the line is. The lines weren't bad when I was there, but you'll have to see how it is for you guys. Um, and also, Diagon Alley Ollivanders is better than the Hogsmeade one. Um, next thing I'm going to talk about is the food, because that's a pretty important thing in my experiences. Um, with anywhere. I'm a big food fan. I love food. Food's great. Um, something that I enjoy, or enjoyed, I'm not there right now, so I'm not currently enjoying it, is the restaurant there. Me and my family must have eaten at the Leaky Cauldron two or three times throughout our five days there. Which doesn't seem that much until you take into account, like, when you're staying in an amusement park, you eat all over the place, you know? Especially since the line there is very long. Uh, get to the Leaky Cauldron, and probably also the third broomsticks, but we never ate there, so I can't vouch for sure. Get there significantly before you are going to be hungry, because the line is very long. And a lot of people don't seem to expect that until they're on the line going, holy shit, this line's taking forever. It... It moves pretty quick. They're very efficient about taking orders and seating people, but it's still a long line. So take that into consideration when you're deciding when you're going to go there. Um, Butterbeer is fantastic, by the way, and so is the food. The food in Visiting World is very good, which I was worried about, but it's okay. It's good. Um, my laptop should stop doing that. Ah. <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm trash. Um, so, uh, uh, there's so much to talk about. Why did I decide to make this one video? I could probably do five videos on this material. Holy shit. But, um, uh, the rides, I think, were the next thing I was going to talk about. There's a lot more I could go on about the food, like there's three different types of butter beer, and it's all great, and pumpkin juice is strangely pricey, but also tastes like liquid pumpkin pie, so it's kind of worth it if you like pumpkin pie. Um, fuck me. I mean, I didn't say that. I don't curse at all. The rides. Rides are what I was going to talk about. Let's talk about the rides. Yeah. Um, so, the first ride we went on was Escape Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, which is totally rad. Um, but here's the thing. The line's really long. And fast passes, or whatever they're called there, I don't know, every park seems to feel the... Every amusement park's like, we're gonna have this thing that lets you skip lines, and we're gonna have a different name for it than every other park. So I don't remember what the name of it is, but, um... Those don't work in the Wizarding World. You can use them anywhere else in the park, but not the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Now, if you are staying at a Universal Studios hotel, you get into the park an hour early in the morning. And I strongly recommend you do what we did, which is you book it to the Wizarding World and you get on the um, one of the lines there. Because even then, an hour early, it's going to be really long. But the ride is totally worth it. It's kind of one of the... It's like a combination of a ride, but also a movie. So, like, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what characters are in it, because I don't want to spoil. No spoilers. But, um, I will say Bill Weasley is in it. And I forgot how much I enjoyed him as a character until he walked on to the into the room and I was like, hey! Billy boy I had just said that. Oh, oh. Ah, I said that. Um, so yeah, 
that was really cool. The other really cool one is the Hogwarts ride. I don't remember what that one's called, but the line brings you all through Hogwarts. Like, as you're walking through the line, you're actually just walking through the halls and classrooms of Hogwarts. Then you get on the ride, and you go through the halls and classrooms of Hogwarts some more. While also, the Hogwarts one is similar to the Gringotts. It's just in a different location, different plot line. But, um, they're both fantastic. They are so fantastic. I'm gonna try and, you know, splice in some pictures from my trip. So you guys don't just have to stare at my face this whole time. But, um, that might have worked. If that worked, great. If that didn't work, I might have given up because everything is hard. Um, final thing. Wands. Back to these, because I just remembered something I forgot to talk about. There are two types of wands, besides character and non-character specific. There's also just model wands, which are meant to look almost like look like the movie prop. And then there's ones with this on the end. These are interactive wands, and you can actually cast spells throughout the park. Which is rad. But here's the here's the thing. You have to like there'll be a little like medallion on the floor that'll say the name of the spell and the motion you have to do with it. So, like, Reparo is just a continuous spiral that you just keep doing until the item has finished repairing itself. Uh, Aguamenti, there's a few spots for that. I don't remember what it is. One of the spots is the Mermaid Fountain, though, and that's my favorite one. Um, uh, so, yeah, those are really cool. But one thing that I realized that it took me like two days to realize, so I wasted a lot of time. Don't be embarrassed to be a nerd. Like, a lot of... I'm sure if you watch my videos, you're a nerd. It's... you kind of have to be. But, um... When I was first there, I was, for some reason, giving a shit about what people thought. And being all like, oh, I want to cast that spell, but I'm not gonna, because I'm a... F I'm an adult. Ugh. Don't be an adult. I mean, do be an adult. Don't act like a small child, break down crying, throwing hizzy fits. That's gross. Kids are gross. But, um... Like, don't be embarrassed to cast the spells. Like, just walk right up. I mean, if there's a small child waiting to go, let them cast the spell, walk around a bit, wait for it to reset and come back. But... If there's an open spot to cast a spell, just step right up and do it. Have fun. It's great. Don't be embarrassed because of stupid stuff. I mean, yeah, you're an adult, but you're also big enough of a nerd to go to Florida so you could visit Diagon Alley. And big enough of a nerd from there to spend... 35 or 45 dollars, I forget how much, on a wand, and also probably some garb. Like, I've got a Slytherin scarf over there, that's super rad, but it's over there. So I guess you're not gonna get to see it, because I'm lazy. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I think I have to talk about. I'll go edit this. Bye!